Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I'm working on that Toyota Tundra, the one with the steering rack leak, and we got the approval, we're changing the steering rack. So I took the front wheels off. I'm gonna run you through a few things here. I'm not gonna show you step-by-step -step how to change the steering rack, but I'm gonna run you through a few things just to make your life easier if you're doing a steering rack. So here we got the front wheels off. And if you look down here, you got the tie rods. Now the steering rack's coming right from Toyota. It'll have the inner tie rods and the bellows as part of it. What you do is, when everything's attached, crack the jam nut free and make sure the inner tie rod spins from the outer tie rod to make sure it moves. Because if you try to do that once it's off and on a bench, it's a pain in the neck. Take the outer tie rod off with a rack or break it free from this uh, knuckle here. And then once you do that, spin the outer tie rod end off the inner tie rod. Make your life a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna take the cotter pins out, then I'm gonna crack those free and make sure the inner tie rods turn. Okay, so I took the cotter pin out on both sides, and I'm going to crack the jam nut free. The only reason I did the cotter pins now was because that's just how I did it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. So, crack these free. Now, you saw the effort I had to put into cracking that free. Imagine doing that on the ground with that tie rod loose. This whole thing's going to spin. So, it just saves you the aggravation. So, do that. We're going to do the other side, and then we're going to make sure that this turns. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to take a wrench, you can use an adjustable wrench, whatever, and just make sure that, that see that, how the inner tie rod's moving free from the outer tie rod? Because if it gets stuck in there and you've got to fight with this thing off the car, it's much easier to do it right now than it is uh, on the floor, at least with the rack bolted up and stuff like that. So do all that. I'm going to unbolt the outer tie rod. It's just a 21 or a 19 millimeter nut on top, and then we're going to separate these two. Okay, so now, like I said, that's a 19. We're going to take a 19, just zip that off. And most of the time, the easiest way to separate these two is to strike the knuckle with a hammer. Maybe a dead blow or something like that. Now, I am terrible with a hammer, and I'll be the first to admit it. Like, just keep an eye out, I might break a tail light. There she goes, she popped out. So now, with that separated like that, now turn the tie rod off. Like I said, do this in the car because now the rack is actually bolted down and it makes it like that much easier. All right, so now I'm gonna do the other side. And um, then we're gonna put this up in here and drop the shields and stuff like that. All right, so now from underneath, what we're gonna do is take out the four 12 millimeter headed bolts, hold the shield in place. And we're dropping the shield out of it. Toyota metal shields are held in with hooks in the front. So now you can get to the our steering lines are here. You're going to see what they're attached to. I might have to take these cross braces out. Might make my life a little bit easier with these out of the way. So I might just drop those out. And then you got the steering shaft here. You're going to disconnect that. I do have the battery disconnected. That's like step one when you're doing something like this. Um, and just be mindful not to spin the steering shaft because the key is in an unlocked position because I want to have the ability to turn the wheels just in case. So. This way I could do that and take that pinch bolt out. All right, so let's knock that pinch bolt out. Not a big deal. You can see it wasn't super tight. Just enough to keep that thing locked in place. Now what we're probably going to do is get a pry bar on there. Let me go get one. And it should separate relatively easy, I'm hoping. 
Maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes you open it up just a hair, it makes your life easier. I'm going to fight with this a little bit to get this off. Really not a big deal. Uh, it should come right off. Uh, just having the camera right where I have to have it to film it, it's a pain in the neck. Once that's off, then we're going to take the lines off. Okay, so that actually won't come back any further because it, it binds up on the steering shaft itself. So what you have to do in a situation like that is unbolt the rack. Once you unbolt the rack and you start to slide it forward, you can get that out. So for now, what we're going to do is get the lines off and Lines are just one conventional pressure line, which is that one, and then that one, which is a return line. So we're going to take those off, we're going to take the return line off first, and then we're going to get fluid leaking out. Once those are off, there's a bracket right up here that's bolted down to the rack. i got to get that from basically reaching over the top, like, like so, to get to the top of it right there. Now I can't film it, I can't see it. Oh, wait, maybe it can yeah, you see it right there. And then I got, once that's free, then I got these two bolts that got to come out, and then the whole rack should be free. All right, so the lines themselves are off. That one was kind of tight, but it came right off. 17 millimeter, the rubber hose popped right off. And of course, all in the bucket. So I got that 12 millimeter out for the bracket there. So now basically just walk the lines out of the way so I can get those out of the way, and then this way I have room to work to get these bolts out. All right, with the lines out of the way, I have plenty of room up here. However, one thing, curiosity here. I was wondering why they told you to take the AC compressor out. So I don't think there's enough room to get that bolt out. Well, we're gonna manipulate this and see what we can do to try to fudge that and not have to take the compressor out. Let me get these off. These look to be 17s, and then we're gonna go from there. All right, so now, of course, the bolt won't clear. However, I think I can manipulate this rack around in a way to make it so I can get some clearance. Clearance. There we go. That's it. Bolts out. So now it's a matter of getting the rack actually out of the vehicle. So let me put you here. So you can watch me struggle with this and try to figure out how it's going to come out. I've got a funny feeling. Let me mess with this a little bit and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay, so what I wound up doing was I wound up turning the wheels all the way to the right. So this tie rod came all the way in. I was able to feed it out through this side. See that? So now, let's see if it'll actually come out. come out if this sway bar wasn't here. Alright. Looks like we're pulling the sway bar out now. Alright, so the sway bar has dropped down. Now let's try it and see if we can get this thing out. And it's just about there. Catching the lines. There it goes. All right, that's out. Not terrible, in all honesty. All right, so it's the next day. I got the new rack. So I'm not gonna go through the entire thing on installing a rack. It's basically a reverse procedure to install, like I always say, but let me just show you. It's a Reman Toyota rack. 
right there. So that's gonna go in. If I run into anything I need to show you, then I'll show you. But basically reverse procedure to install. It really wasn't that bad. All right, so real quick here, one thing I just realized, this kind of throws a little bit of a wrench in things, not much, just adds a little aggravation to be honest with you. On the steering rack, let me show you something. So here where the steering shaft goes on, you notice something? There is no master spline. Nothing. That stinks. Usually there's a master spline, and a master spline only lines up one way to go back together. This will line up in whatever it is. There's you know 40 splines on there. Line up any one, any which one, any yeah, any way of 40 in any position, like in 40 different spots. So yay. So with that, once I get this thing installed, like I said, I got to cut the wheels all the way one way to get this thing back in place. I have to center it in the car, make sure the steering wheel is centered, then install it. Now the problem with that is, let's say I'm off a, a notch, then I gotta unbolt the rack itself so it can come forward so I can disconnect the steering shaft. A eh, little bit of a pain there. Now if this was, if I was putting the old rack back in, I would mark the shaft and the steering shaft and this spline shaft, just this way you get it down in the right position. Just realize that, what are you gonna do? So, all right. Let me get this thing in there. So I just wanted to show you, with the wheels cut all the way one way to make this side short, I got it slipped right in place. So now, this thing will go right where it needs to go. And then what I could do is I could figure out center of the rack and then center of that steering shaft and get them lined up. And then hopefully, we'll be in the right position or orientation, whatever you want to call it. Now one thing I do when I'm installing a rack, some people like to count the teeth some people like to measure me personally, I like to measure. So, if, oh, if you ever break a tape measure, you know, like the spring, the recoils it, if it ever breaks, don't throw it out, cut it. Cut it into pieces, like this. Come in super handy. Sometimes it's easier than dealing with a tape measure. So, here I'm starting at two, and I'm going to three. So basically it's an inch. So then when you come over to the vehicle, See, so I gotta move that out. So two, that's a little too aggressive. All right. That is pretty darn close, two to three. So now you can put the tie rod on. It's gotta go for an alignment anyway, so. Um, but at least this way it gets you kinda close. Okay, so I got the rack pretty much installed. I just let it down, I verified the steering wheel is perfectly straight, and now look at this. If you compare the rear tire to the front tire, you can see a little bit of the back of the sidewall on this side. And same on this, you can see a little bit of the sidewall, the back side of the front tire, compared to the rear. It is pretty darn close to perfect, meaning it's lined up. So I'm confident the steering shaft is in the right orientation so now I can put that bolt in I can finish tightening up the rack itself it's it's snug nothing's tightened yet so now I can just tighten that up and basically I think we're all done putting I gotta put the shields on obviously and then uh, fill it with fluid all right so everything's all set and done underneath now I just added fluid to this there's a couple of different schools of thought when it comes to adding fluid or purging out the um, power steering system when you've opened up, a, opened up a line or replaced a part or whatever. The way I like to do it is I'll start it up and immediately shut it off. Like let, it, let it run for just like a split second, then shut it down. Let it purge out its air. That's one way. Keep doing that over and over and over again. One way a lot of guys like to do it is they'll put fluid in it and then cut the wheels all the way one way and then cut the wheels all the other way. I don't have good luck with that. Never have. I know people that have great luck with it. Me, personally, I don't. So, there's that. So, I just added fluid to this. So, now we're going to start it up. I had the battery disconnected. Whenever you're doing something like that, always disconnect the battery. Mainly because you're working with the steering column, stuff like that. You don't want to accidentally shock it, you know, like, strike it or something like that. And possibly do damage to the airbag system. 
that's all. Uh, that's the reason I do it. Um, plus, I wanted to have the steering wheel unlocked so this way I can cut the wheels back and forth. So I'd have to have the key in like an accessory position in order to be able to do that. And if I didn't have the battery disconnected, I could have killed the battery. So let me tighten that up and let's do the uh, start and shut off. Hang on one second. So now really, this is all I do. And shut it off. And then we come out here, and we check the fluid. A lot of times you gotta let it sit, because air bubbles will come up. If none came up, oh there, you can actually see like a wall of air bubbles, I think. Is that what I'm looking at? I can't tell. Because I'm at a weird angle. Hard to tell what that... Yeah, that's air bubbles. So, what I'll do now is... I'll just let it sit for a minute while I'm cleaning up my tools. Then I'll come back to it and I'll start it up and I'll shut it off right away again. Do that several times. Help purge out any air bubbles. Because what happens is, if you have air that's in, trapped in the system and you keep it running, you're basically recirculating the air bubbles. So this way they come to the top and then they, you know, the bubbles themselves, they pop, obviously, but it dissipates the bubbles, and then you start it up and it recirculates the fluid. So, like I said, if you just start it, the bubbles will get circulated throughout the system, and sometimes you can airbound the system that way. Uh, the other way to do this, too, would be you'd have to vacuum bleed it. I'm not going to go through that right now. I've showed you that with brakes before, vacuum bleeding brakes. You can do the same thing with a power steering system to, to suck the air up to the top. So let me start cleaning up some tools, and um, then we're going to come back to this. All right, so you can see the bubbles dissipated, so we're gonna do that all over again. All right. Now let's check it again. Yeah, you see it's full of bubbles. So we're gonna repeat this several times to get the air out of the system. Obviously, you gotta add fluid as required. But let me do that, and we're going to get this to a point. Once you stop seeing bubbles, start cutting the wheels, too, because you'll cut the wheels and you'll get some uh, air coming out that way. Okay, so I did it again, and I cut the wheels, and if you look, that's not milky. That's suds, basically. Lots of air in the system. Look really close. See it? And if you look close, you can see it actually, the bubbles popping. So... That's what you need to get out of the system. And like I said, if you just keep it running, all you're doing is circulating that stuff around. Yeah, eventually it'll come out, but it takes forever that way. You could harm the pump. Unlikely, but you could, it could happen. Okay, so final step before the road test. Do a visual inspection of the work you just did. So basically we're gonna look and make sure nothing's leaking, I got nothing dripping out, the lines look okay. Yeah, everything looks fine up there. Everything looks good here. Yeah, no issues, so I'm happy. All right, let's go on a road test. Okay, so I am at our secret um, testing facility in Mexico, and uh, I want to see how this thing is doing on the road while I film. And it goes perfectly fine. It goes dead straight. Steering wheel's off a little bit, not much. Let me show you in a second here. Mexico is beautiful this time of year. So, here we are. We're going pretty straight. The steering wheel's off just a hair to the right. But it goes straight, and everything seems good. So, let me cross back into the States, and um, I'm going to go get this thing aligned. And why are we aligning it if everything seems fine? Because that's part of the repair. You're supposed to align it. You need to actually get it on an alignment machine and check it. I know people would say, well, if it goes straight, just leave it alone. No. No. Because your, your toe could be off, and you don't realize it. Plus, the steering wheel is off a little bit, so... Just gonna get that all straightened out. All right, hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.